this chapter, we're going to explore the calculus of exponential and logarithmic functions. In this lesson, we will be looking specifically at the properties of logarithmic functions. Okay, so now for a moment here, let's talk about logarithms as, as functions, okay? So let's just remember where this, the kind of connection here. So we've got our exponential function, okay? We've got our exponential function, y is equal to b to the x. And then we've got our logarithmic function. Whoops, I'm probably going off the screen there. Yeah, I am, I could tell. And that is going to be uh, y is equal to the log base b of x. Okay, and remember how this works. Remember the connection here. When we take and find the inverse, we get x is equal to b to the y, and then that becomes our logarithm there. And so this is the key thing here, that we're, that the logarithmic function is the inverse of the exponential function. Okay, so now let's just explore what that means uh, graphically because there's a lot of properties of, of the exponential logarithmic functions that are, that are more clear when you look at the graphs of them. So let's just take a quick look here. So here's my, my grid, my coordinate plane. Better be good about that, make that x and y. Okay, so let's do this. So my exponential function here, actually I'll do it this way. My exponential function here will be in red. up like that. This is going to be y is equal to b to the x. And I, I'm assuming that b in this case here for, for both of these, maybe I'll do it like this. Uh, I'm just going to arbitrarily decide that b is going to be some number uh, bigger than 1. Okay. I just, not because I absolutely have to, just because it'll be consistent with a diagram that I think most of you are comfortable with. Now, when we find the inverse of a function, that is essentially the same as finding its reflection over the line y is equal to x. Okay, so there's y equals x, and then my logarithmic function is gonna end up looking something like this. Okay, and this is gonna be y is equal to the log base b of x. So those are my two, my two inverses of each other. Now, with the graph in mind here, uh, Let's take a look at some of the, the properties of the graphs. Maybe I'll, I'll put those just over here so it's a little bit more visible. So let's start with the exponential function first. Okay, uh, notice that its a domain is gonna be x is an element of the reals. Its range will be y is greater than zero. Okay, uh, it's got a y-intercept at one. Uh, x-intercept, well, unless it's transformed, it doesn't have one, okay? It has got a horizontal asymptote, y is equal to zero. And then I'm going to add a couple more here because this is a calculus class here. If we take the limit as x goes to infinity of b to the x, we are going to get infinity. On the other hand, if we take the limit as x approaches negative infinity of b to the x, in this particular case, that's gonna to go to zero. Now, compare that to our logarithmic function, okay? So here's our log. Its domain is gonna be x is greater than zero, whereas its range is gonna be y is an element of the reals here. Now. That is, that is a little something weird here. Uh, I'm just going to take a moment here just to talk about that. An exponential function, when we talk about exponential growth, uh, when we say something grows exponentially, what we're really saying, and I mean, if you're, if you're not a mathematician, if you're just kind of hearing somebody say it, what they're trying to say is something is growing really fast, okay? Because exponential growth is really quite quick. Logarithmic growth, on the other hand, Given that a logarithm is the inverse of an exponential, logarithmic growth, growth is very, very slow. It, the range here is still an element of the reals, but just to give you an idea of how slow this goes, if the base is, if the base is 10, as in a common log, this only gets up to three when you get out to 1,000, when x is 1,000. 
I got to have X go all the way out to a million before this gets up to six. This is a very, very slow growing graph, but it does grow. Okay, it does grow. Let's keep looking at it. Uh, my Y intercept, unless it's transformed, it doesn't have one, but my X intercept is going to be one. It will have a vertical asymptote at X is equal to zero. And now we got to talk about these things uh, a little bit differently, okay? Um, when I take the limit, I can take the limit as X approaches infinity of the log base B of X, and that is actually going to be infinity. That's because it does have this, this infinite range here. It does go off uh, to positive infinity here. But I can no longer take the limit as X approaches negative infinity, okay? Uh, and that's because my graph doesn't. Unless I start to include um, complex numbers here, it, it doesn't go that direction there. So what I can do, though, is take the limit as x approaches 0 from the right of the log base b of x, and that is actually going to approach negative infinity. So here I've got all of the, the properties of this that are actually of, of interest to me. Now what I want to do, now that we've done all of that, we've talked about logarithms, we've, we've explored some of the properties of logarithms, what I want to do is introduce you to a good friend of mine, the natural logarithm. Okay, and this is, this are, uh, these are logarithms, or this is the logarithm base E. So we had we had introduced you to this, this special number e in a previous lesson here as the, as the base of the exponential function. Now what we're going to do is we're going to find the inverse of that function and it's, it's going to become uh, a very special logarithm. So here's our exponential. y is equal to e to the x. What we're going to do now is we're going to find the, the inverse of that. So we're going to get x is equal to e to the y. And it turns out this is equivalent to y is equal to the log base e of x. But you're not going to write it like that. Because e is such a special base for an exponential function, what we want is we want a, uh, some notation here that indicates how unique this logarithm must be as a result. So we're going to use ln of x. Now, and maybe it would help if I put some parentheses around that, ln. Now, what that ln stands for here is uh, this, I guess, is the log, I got to look, look at my notes here, logarithmus uh, naturalis, okay, and some Latin there. Anyway, this is a logarithm base e. It's very special because the base is e. In fact, if you look at your calculator, most of our calculators, if you look look uh, kind of on the bottom left-hand side there where the, the log button is, you'll notice just underneath it is the ln button, okay? So common logs, natural logs, really, really important here. But having said that, I wanna emphasize here that it is just a logarithm, okay? So it is special because it's got a base e, but at the same time, it is just a logarithm. So if I take a quick look at my graph here and I, I graph these two functions here, here's y is equal to e to the x. Well, that it's a, a really special function, but at the same time, it, it's just an exponential function. Here's my y equals x. And when I find its reflection, over that line, I get this function right here, which is y equals the natural log of x, which, although it's special, once again, is just a nat it's just a logarithm. Okay, so it behaves, it obeys all of the same rules as all the other logarithms that we were just looking at. What's going to be really unique and special about it is when we start to do uh, take derivatives, and and you'll see how how unique that. Um, that process is in, in just a little bit here. First of all, I just want to go through and take a look at some, some properties of the natural logarithm, really just to emphasize that it's just a logarithm.
Okay, so let's take a look at some examples here. So we're just going to evaluate a bunch of these things here uh, just to figure out what they simplify down to, if you want to think of it that way. So if, if I've got the natural log of e to the x, what is that equivalent to? Well, if you don't know off the top of your head, if you don't recognize the relationship that you're seeing right now, let's just call this y. Say, I don't know what this whole thing is equal to. It's my unknown here. Now, once I've got a logarithmic function here equal to y here, I can, I can utilize the, uh, the properties of logarithms to simplify that. This is a log base e. So I know e is my base to the y has got to equal e to the x. What's inside? So base to the exponent is equal to the argument here. Well, now look at this. My power is equal to my power. My bases are the same. So therefore, it must be the case that y is equal to x. So I can come back up here and say that this whole thing must be equal to x. <coughs> the natural log of e to the x must be equal to x. And actually, that, that does make sense here because the natural log and the exponential function are inverses of each other. Remember, okay, recall that if you've got the log base a of a to the x, okay, this is going to be equivalent to x because a logarithm base a and an exponent, uh, base, sorry, a power base a are inverses of each other. Now, over here, I can actually do the exact same, I can actually do the exact same thing here. Uh, let's say I make this equal to y. Well, I don't know how to, how to solve for this. I'm trying to figure out what this simplifies down to, but notice this has got an exponent here. So one of the things I could do here is just take the natural log of both sides. The natural log of e to the natural log of x will equal the natural log of y. Now, notice what this implies, though. I, I just looked at this. The natural log of a power of e is simply going to be the natural log. So basically, that exponent. The natural log of e to some exponent will just be equal to that exponent. So this is going to equal the natural log of y. This left-hand side is equal to the natural log of y, and I just figured out that that's equal to the natural log of x. Okay, well, my natural log is equal to my natural log. That means, therefore, that x, again, is equal to y. And so this expression here must be equal to x. And again, that makes sense. I expect that because recall that a to the log base a of x is equal to x. This particular rule is a little bit harder for, for students to wrap their heads around than, than this one. Uh, they are basically stating the same relationship, just that inverses are canceling each other out here. So now we can move through this a little bit, a little bit easier. Okay, The natural log of e, well, this is really like asking this, what is the log base a of a equal to? And the answer in this case here, if you think back to our, our expression up here, how log base a of a to the x is just x, well, this is log base a of a to the 1. So this answer here must be 1. As a result, this answer here must also be 1. The base of the natural log is e. Natural log of e has to be equal to 1. What's the natural log of 1? Well, now remember what this is asking, okay? If I just go back to a regular old logarithm, if I've got the log base b of some unknown is equal to 1, okay? Oh, sorry, I asked that wrong. I'm going to rewrite that. Whoops. If I said that the, the, the log base b of 1 is equal to x, what is, what is x? Well, bear in mind that what this is saying is that b to the x is equal to 1. Well, what exponent can I put on any base and get 1 as a result? Well, the answer is 0. So the natural log of, of 1 is going to be 0. And that's, that's true for basically any base there, okay? Let's take a look at this one. Natural log of e to the 3 minus x is equal to 8. Don't let this one throw you off, okay? I, I basically threw this one into this question <coughs> uh, just to, to go back and really emphasize this rule that the natural log and the exponential function are inverses of each other. Basically, what's happening is those are canceling each other out, and that left-hand side is simply equal to 3 minus x is equal to 8. 
So bring that x over, bring the 8 over, and I will get that x is going to be equal to negative 5. Okay? Now, let's take a look at this next one. This one is more along the lines of a, of a real logarithmic equation here because the unknown is in the argument of the, of the logarithm. So if I convert this into, if I convert this into exponential form, this is going to become e squared will equal 3x minus 1. And now, for me to solve this, all I got to do is isolate the x. So I'll add 1 to both sides, divide by 3. So x is going to equal e squared plus 1, and then I'm going to divide that by 3. And there's my answer. Now, I can figure out what that's equal to. I can go to my calculator here, uh, and I can determine that that's going to be approximately equal to 2.79. Or I could leave it in exact form, e squared plus 1 over 3. Okay, now let's take a look at, at one more, slightly different sort of a problem here. I want to find the domain of the log uh, base 3 of x squared minus 1. Actually, I don't know why in my notes here this is the log base 3. Let's, let's just change that here. Yoink. Let's make it y is equal to the natural log. Why not? The natural log of x squared minus 1. Again, just to, to point out that, that this is going to behave exactly like a, a regular old logarithm here. Well, the restriction here on the domain is that a natural log, when you take a log, you have to be looking at a, a positive, positive value here. Unless you're going to start talking about imaginary numbers, complex numbers, I want this to be equal to a positive number here. So, I am going to let x squared minus 1 be greater than 0. Okay? Bring that over. x squared has got to be greater than 1. And now let's think about this. Think about, think about your number line here. Think about my number line. Where does that occur? Here's 0, here's negative 1, here's 1. When you square a number and get a result larger than 1, you are talking about values that are bigger than 1, but at the same time, less than negative 1, okay? So what we're going to get here is that x, as a result, must be less than negative 1 union x is greater than 1. If you want to write it in, uh, in interval notation, you might say negative infinity up to negative 1 union 1 out to an infinity. Or you might even say it like this. So you could do this or this, or you might even just say that the absolute value of x has to be greater than 1. That actually states the exact same thing. Okay. Uh, anyway, that's what you need to know. Hopefully that will help clarify uh, some of the stuff that we get into in the next lesson.